shows. You talked about uh, shooting Fashion Week those four seasons over those two years, how you needed press credentials to get into Fashion Week. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the other different settings in which you've taken pictures and some of the other different kinds of people um, who've been subjects of your pictures and how you were able to build relationships with those folks? Um, so I've, I've, had, I've done two photo books, um, the one you mentioned, and before that, um, I published a book about the rock boys in Queens post-Hurricane Sandy. Um, and for that project, I, I just walked around for a year, a full year, just every day I would go out and shoot. And, you know, people started to, you know, see me and recognize me and talk to me. Um, you know, the New York was a mess for years after Sandy. And I was just walking down the street and a woman ran out of her house and said, hey, are, are you a reporter? You know, like, come talk to me. I want to tell you my story. Um, and, you know, I started talking to her and she became like a main subject of the book. Um, so, you know, a lot of it is just being out there with your camera and being open to new situations and people and, you know, being respectful and being a good listener. Um, that was possible because I, I wasn't really getting, you know, access to a closed space like Fashion Week. That was more just, you know, like trying to interact well with the world around me. Um, for the second book, that was all photographed inside Cook County Jail in Chicago. Um, obviously, it's very, very hard to get inside jails and prisons, um, especially to photograph. Um, that project started as a collaboration with a nonprofit called the Vera Institute of Justice um, and with Vice. And it initially they just sent me for a week to do like a short feature story about the prevalence of mental illness at the jail. Um, and I did that, it was published. The jail was really happy with the work that I did, which is sort of miraculous. Um, and Vice was happy with it, everyone was happy with it. So I approached the jail after that piece came out and said, you know, I would love to keep working on this. Could I possibly have access? Um, and they said, maybe if you get a publisher. So I found the publisher to back me. And I, then I asked the nonprofit that I had worked with previously, which is, you know, very powerful in the criminal justice space, um, if they would work with me on it. And um, they agreed. And then I was able to go back, I don't know, maybe a dozen times over three years um, to keep working on the project and photograph and interview people, um, which was fairly unheard of access. I was very lucky. Um, and, you know, when you're interviewing people, like, you know, like I said before, it's just being respectful, quiet, listening, you know, learning good interviewing skills, um, you know, following up, being prepared, you know, doing your research. Um, all things that you learn in school, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Um, to, to that point, you know, we're conducting an interview. You talked about some of the things that make a good interview, listening, being prepared. Um, as we're, we're thinking about the students of Keith Middle School, these young people, they're, they're thinking about going out in the world and, you know, at some point being able to interact with people again, to ask questions, to listen carefully to those answers, be prepared. Do you have any advice that you would give the uh, young people of today? As far as interviewing? As far as in yeah, interviewing, I think so, yeah. Um, you can never do enough research on something. Um, you know, just know your statistics, know everything that has happened. Um, you know, I spent six months researching Cook County Jail, the whole history. Um, you know, why there are so many mentally ill people there, right? It's not just like one day there's a lot of um, mentally ill people that show up in jail, right? It's because of policy, um, you know, a Republican governor cut an enormous amount of funding for, you know, community health care in Illinois um, and shut down uh, a dozen mental health care facilities. And the result of that is people lost access to care and then, you know, they started ending up in jail instead. Um, so that was, you know, a really important part of the story and important for me to know that 
background when I was interviewing, um, you know, not only people that were incarcerated, but also like the corrections officers and the doctors working in the jail, you know, it's, it's really important to understand, you know, like the underlying issues with this. So just being um, well prepared, knowledgeable, um, really, really, really important. And, um, you know, I think it's natural to be nervous when interviewing someone, but, you know, recognize that the other person is nervous too so um you know just kind of like working at putting each other at ease make a joke be brave you can even like acknowledge that you're nervous you know just be kind of human and try to you know break the ice and you know just get it going um and you know that helps very much to help people open up and also you know if you are knowledgeable about the subject people will trust you more that you know you are someone that kind of knows what they're talking about Absolutely. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I wanted to, you're not feeling nervous right now, are you? I mean, we're old friends. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be nervous communicating in this uh, terrible time. Although speaking of uh, nervousness and like the, the time, and maybe there's a lot of anxiety in the world right now. Last question I'm going to ask, and this is, maybe this is uh, relevant to uh, the discussion around um, institutions like Cook County Prison or Cook County Jail, what are you working on right now during coronavirus? Or how is this quarantine period affected the way you do your work um, either at, at New York University or um, taking photographs or as a journalist? Um, it's been really hard. It's been hard for my husband's also. Um, and, you know, we have a family, right? So it's just, it's very different trying to manage career and having two little kids and, you know, making sure everyone's staying safe. Um, we, you know, we live in New York City, but we're now upstate at my parents' house to just try to stay away from everything. And so the kids have some like room to play. Um, that is challenging because, you know, my husband was photographing for the Wall Street Journal, um, you know, the pandemic in New York, uh, but he had to stop doing that because we were coming upstate and needed to protect my parents. So, you know, there's always this sort of tension um, between work and family. Um, so that's, amplified now. Um, I teach like everybody all my classes um, over Zoom, which is challenging because the my college classes are three hours and 45 minutes long and it's very um, critique based and there's a lot of guest speakers. Um, you know, it's usually like prints up on the wall. So um, having to sort of reorganize thing, reorganize that has been challenging. Um, and just you know, trying to work and having a baby and a toddler is <laughs> uh, a bit insane. Um, as far as my own photography is concerned, I, I've been working on a project actually upstate. Um, the town I grew up in has uh, two factories that have been slowly poisoning the water. It's kind of a mini flint and um, I've been doing portraits of people that live here that have gotten sick. And I think it's a really good project. I'm excited about it, but right now I, you know, I can't do it. Right. Cause I'm yeah. doing up close intimate portraits. So mostly it's just kind of like cooking and teaching and trying to keep the house clean and <laughs> hoping that, you know, things get better soon. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, I think we all hope that things are going to get better soon. And I do, Appreciate you, uh, Lily Kobielski, for taking the time to talk with us today for Office Hours. Uh, the book is I Refuse for the Devil to Take My Soul. Your work has appeared in uh, Vogue, Vice, The New York Times, and um, you know, also a friend from way back. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, from New Bedford, Massachusetts, this is Mr. Green encouraging you to take care of one another and stay safe. Thank you. I appreciate thank you. it.